and have the prideful buff going into the last boss. So doing math there. One of the criteria is for Matic Plus or Tanks is being good at math. Hey everyone, doing a plus 10 halls of atonement on my brewmaster here. This is a punk group and it's a week of tyrannical, necrotic and inspiring. Which is not the best week for key pushes to be honest. Right, so I'm just being very wary about the Gargons here, just kiting away from them while I drop the bleeds. And the Hunter is basically um, doing a really nice job here by dropping Binding Shot just to get them off my back. I'm getting a touch of death here. And let's continue clearing. I'm saving my Celestial Brew for the next pull. Are we gonna pull it now? And Tempered Hump to start. These are the Bleeds. Alright, Bleeds are racking up. I'm gonna get out there now. Going for a cheeky Flashcraft in my Ring of Peace here. Just deal with the bears a little better. I'm using my trinket on the bears. And binding shots down, so I'm kiting again. This is great teamwork from this group so far. It's pretty awesome. Alright, you can pull all four together. Just need to make sure like you know your party helps to kick ideally. Hopefully everyone knows what to do here. I'm using Fort Brew while the party catches up. And using my Bondas Brew here too. And Celestial Brew. The trash that's incoming, the thing will hurt. I'm gonna ring here just to stop the damage output. Basically, the healer died from the bolts not being interrupted, which is not ideal. I'm gonna go and purify. I mean, I'm gonna vivify myself while he's casting trash, just so that I buy a bit more time before my healer catches up. And we have rightful here. I'm going to slowly bring him to the other mobs. Like the reason why I'm bringing him to the other side is because um, that way we maximize his buff for the other pull. Which I'm going for right now. he will start to hurt here a little. Just letting my healer catch up here. And using Dampen Harm off the bat. Going for a stun here. There's, there's a lot of cast that's going through. Probably can afford to ring if we need to. I think we're fine here. So to maximize the buff I'm pulling. I'm chain pulling here. The buff is another 20 seconds to go. I should really add that buff to my buff tracker here. That's something I need to do. For all my tank classes. I'm really excited about tomorrow by the way. It is, um, well as of this time of the recording, it will be the release of my 9.0 UI to everyone on this community for free. But by the time you watch this, it's probably already released. Uh, but I've been working on that for quite a while now, a couple of weeks. So I'm just really eager to see um, you know, the feedback regarding it. It'll be just nice to see uh, what people think about them. I had three stacks on me, that's why it kind of hurt. Nice binding shot by the hunter, which was great. I'll pull these guys in the front. I don't really want to pull the patrol there. The patrol is going to suck. With so much Gargon, it's going to be a pain. All our kicks on cooldown, unfortunately. Um, and also, I didn't want to pull it because I knew the manifestation was going to spawn. Sorry, I had to grab aggro there. So the way the manifestation spawns, in case you guys are wondering, is at 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100%. Um, so during those timers, you kind of want to make sure that you know, you're in a good position to pull um, decent size pull, which I'm gonna do now with these guys. Tempen Harm here to start. These are racking up. That's why it's starting to hurt. So I'm gonna ring here. Wait for Flashcraft. Alright, on to the next pull while we still have the buff. Using my Trinket off the bat. And the Invoke Celestial here. And Bondas as well. I'm going to go for a stun here, just to minimize the damage output. Oof, that thing really hurts. Might die here. Yeah, I'm probably dead. Or maybe not. Alright, and we're pulling. Want to try and kick that thing. Which I did. Going for a fort brew here. 
in the ring because no one's cut no one's kicking those I'm gonna go for a vivify on myself and we're doing the manifestation of pride I'm gonna bring in the oil stone bond to cleave of it and the reason is that way we can jump straight into the boss with the full uh, buff and not waste any uh, of the uptime on the buff on doing trash we're pulling right away just waiting for the healer to stabilize and we're pulling so as a tank you just want to be very careful not to proxy aggro those guys i'm just trying to stack the debris together close to one another before i bring him out for the beams which is in another 10 seconds I purify here my right, beams is in 10 now and this is where we should do the beams the beams will actually change directions midway so it's very important you play from a top-down view to kind of see where the beams are and to react fast but everyone knows the mechanic which is great so i'm going to try and stack the debris here that way we have more room to maneuver later on using my celestial brew Right, and boss is dead. This dungeon has been going quite well. I think everyone in this party kind of knows what to do, which is great. So I'm pulling the ankle biters separately without these two guys because it's necrotic. So it can get really dicey if I can't reset my stacks. Right, now I can pull them both in. You want to make sure that you have a kick for the stone reaver when you cast stone form. That's really important. That will waste a lot of time if you don't kick it. I'm just gonna heal myself. Alright, so we trotted past those guys. The benefits of having a roll. And we're doing the second boss now. So the way I'm thinking about this fight is I want to save ring for when the ads come out. That way I can stop some of their channels and cast. Our ads are here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ring one side of them in. I'm going to stun them before their cast ends. Okay, those things really hurt. Going for a Celestial Brew here and a Trinket. Ideally, I could have used my Trinket on the ads, but I guess it's okay to use it now just to stabilize. Alright, ads should be spawning soon. I'm using Fort Brew here just to help stabilize and Celestial. I'll try and ring those guys in as well. Right, touch of death here. Right, whoever has Curse of Stone, you just want to move on to the adds here. Which is what he's doing. It's okay, I would have moved to the middle though. To kill those adds. Um, it's okay. Boss is about to die, we should be fine. I'm going to use touch of death on the boss here. I'm going to kick that. Celestial Bruce up, so I'm using it. And I'm going to stun here to stop the damage from coming in. So the leg sweep there definitely bought us a few more seconds to work on the boss and the boss is dead. This pool is traditionally dangerous because of the gargons. Just letting my healer drink before I pull. Alright, now I'm pulling. I'm gonna dampen harm here right off the bat. Those things are starting to hurt a little. Are we gonna ring? Yeah, I'm gonna ring here. And flashcraft while they chase me. Just to be safe. Probably gonna kite it to and fro here. Alright, big bears are scary. Just gonna kite. Alright, bear's dead. We are 2% off prideful. But we just need to be very careful actually. I'm trying to line outside, pull them. But hopefully the group cooperates with me. Going for a bone dust here. I'm gonna go for a stun as well. Just to minimize damage. I wonder if I can ring them back. It doesn't work on them. Alright, I learned something new, I guess. Alright, those things hurt. Alright, doing a prideful here. Same thing here, I'm gonna bring one side of the gargon. Um sorry, I meant I'm gonna bring one side of the gargoyle in. I'm popping Celestial Brew here to help him out. Maybe stagger, so I'm purifying. I'm just single target on the pride full down because so I think we need help there. Alright, that way we get the full duration of the buff on the boss. Just waiting for the healer to catch up before I pull the boss. 
and we're pulling. Alright, with the buff, we should be able to take it down really quickly. I should have saved my kick there for volley. I always forget, like it's instinctive. So it's something I need to remember going forward. Unfortunate. Alright, the ghost should spawn soon. Should be hiding behind pillars here. Uh, it's not fixated on me, so it doesn't matter. I'm using my ox here. Interrupted a bolt. I'm hoping someone knows how to kick volley here. Alright, nobody kicked. Unfortunate. Maybe I should save it. Alright, it's fixated onto me, so I'm moving behind the lantern here. Okay, there you go. Easy. They changed the animation of Anima Fountain, I realized. Instead of red, it's now like orange. I guess they took feedback, like it was really hard to see. Like, I'm not sure if you're colorblind or something, it's probably gonna be really hard to see like what's going on. So that's interesting to me. I'm using Dampen Hum just to help him a little here. Oh, and Touch of Death's up, so I'm using it. As you can see, like a Brewmaster's damage and output in single target fight, not great. Anyway, um, DPS classes, they generally really love this pull. It's, um, it's time to pad. <laughs> you can like feel their excitement when it comes to padding. The good news is everyone knows that we are supposed to kill that first. Because the boss is going to heal back damage on Duck Communion anyway. Based on the adds available in the room. But I'm going over to grab the rest of the adds now. As you can see, the Shadow Priest was happily padding with Mindseer towards the um, second half of the room there. Right, I guess on Fortified, like, it's important to kick the wake-up bolts, but Tyrannical it really doesn't matter. Use my Bone Dust here. Oh, we're actually short on Calm, I just realized. Alright, we're gonna do the boss first, and then we go back for Calm, because that way we get to skip the final Prideful mob spawn. So it's a bit more efficient. So if you guys remember reaping, like, people wanted to kill the boss, the final boss of a dungeon at 99%, 98%, right? And then you go back and get full count for 100, and that way you finish the, the key, you time the key, and you don't have to do the final reaping. Same concept here, you do not have to do the final pride full if you kill the last boss first and then go back to get 100% count. So yeah, that's what we're going for here. Alright, this boss is generally really easy. Like, you just want to dodge, like, the kinetic toss. And what you want to do next... Oh well. <laughs> My healer died. Rip. Um, is there a way to reset the boss? Yeah, I don't think I can reset the boss. Yeah, I'll probably just die here. You got one shot there. Alright, since we wipe, we might as well get more count from mobs in general. I'm just pulling one mob while the rest of them catch up. Moving away from the powerful swipe. I wasn't watching there. Got hit by powerful swipe. Not ideal. And these guys give 2%, so... I think these two are fine, right? No, we need more mobs, actually. It might be slightly just off. No, it gives 2.6, which means that I can use the final gargoyle to prompt Prideful. And that way we can get 100% and have the Prideful buff going into the last boss. So doing math there. One of the criteria for Matic Plus or Tanks is being good at math. Yeah, so yeah, the final Gargoyle that we didn't pull will give us the Prideful. I'm pulling him all the way to boss. I'm just telling people that I'm pulling him to the boss room. That way we get Prideful buff onto the final boss. I wonder if it bugs out. Does it bug out? Oh shit, he does bug out. Yep, can't go through walls. So yeah, you learn something today, gargoyles can't go through wall. Alright, we have a buff after this. Alright, I hope people like dodge. Alright, he got hit. I was trying to move it away from him, but you know. I think it's a bit of personal responsibility. Alright, we have the buff now, so we gotta run. We have probably 45 seconds of the buff on the boss. And I'm pulling the boss here right away. Alright, hopefully no one gets one shot from the statues this time round. I'll probably use my 
Tempen harm. When the dot gets to six seconds, I reckon. That's when it starts to hurt. So Tempen Hum here to basically counteract the dot. Alright, Door of Shadows, you want to move away. Alright, then I want to soak Ritual of Woe. So I'm going to stand here to soak Ritual of Woe, actually. Alright, everyone's soaking, which is great. Another sign that everyone knows the dungeon. It's perfect. I need to get rid of this Wikora. I'll delete it right away before I forget after this dungeon. Using my trinket here as well. Um, the final stigma of pride. I might be in trouble actually. So I'm going to flashcraft just to soak the damage from the stigma of pride. It's dot. It's going to last for another 6 seconds. I right, we need to soak again. Right, this will hurt I think. So, oof, oof. Yep, that was the dot ticking towards the end there. That was a dicey moment. Alright, um, touch of death. Gonna try and zerg it. Alright. Got juke there, almost died. <laughs> Alright, this final dot will hurt. So hopefully he's paying attention to me. I guess I'll save a purify. Alright, there you go. And that is the key. Alright, so we timed the key. Um, it's a bit unfortunate. We missed the plus two by just two seconds. But there's a good key and a smooth run in general. It's just great when everyone knows the dungeon. So hopefully that gives you a glimpse of what Brewmasters can do as we start encroaching on higher and higher keys. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the gameplay. And if you do, do subscribe to the channel. I publish daily Shadowlands content on this channel. Thank you so much for your support and I'll see you in the next video.